My name is ESO and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a video that any Fallout 4 fan is going to find exciting. Today guys, I am going to be showing you around Sanctuary in Fallout 4, but in real life. Like this, life. If you guys didn't know, fairly recently I went to Boston, Massachusetts to go to PAX and Boston is where Fallout 4 is actually baked. And when I was actually over there guys, I met the local sheriff and his name's Richard. He just happens to be a subscriber to my channel and he offered to take us out and actually visit Sanctuary. So while Rich is driving us over to Sanctuary, the first thing I notice is how similar the trees are to the trees you see in Fallout 4. Maybe it was just me, but I found the area almost looked and felt a little bit like the wasteland. Like it's those same tones, that same colour and that same feel of the place. Helped along by the fact it was winter at this time I shot this footage, and also all the trees are pretty much bare. So it's almost like, you know, a nuclear wasteland in the sense, or as close as you're going to get. With the brownie beige coloured grass and everything being quite dull and toned down. Also another thing you'll probably spot is the architecture on the way over to Sanctuary. In my head right now I can very clearly see where the environmental inspiration came from for Sanctuary and its surrounding areas. And I hope you guys can as well. So guys, during this video, I'm obviously going to be comparing Sanctuary from Fallout 4, both the pre-war version and also after the bombs go off, to Sanctuary in real life, as we're going to see in this video footage I've got. And we're also going to be looking at the design aspects of how Bethesda actually changed the in-game version of Sanctuary from the real-life version just to fit with the gameplay and how they wanted you to play and experience Fallout 4. There's been some interesting design decisions that I think are important to note because they're very clever. So right now we're just pulling off Monument Street into the car park which is as close to Sanctuary as you can actually park in real life. Unless you have a key to unlock the gate which you'll see in a moment. And then you just cross over this reasonably busy road and there's literally just a hill going straight down towards Sanctuary. The path is lined with trees either side of you and the first thing you'll obviously notice is that in real life there's no red rocket station, there's not even a water tower actually which is really interesting because that's one of the main landmarks that you always use as a reference point to know you're near Sanctuary. That or even the petrol station. There wasn't even a petrol station nearby. It was just like, after you leave Concord, which I'll talk about in a moment, you just drive through a road through some woodland with some scattered houses around on either side of the road, then you reach that car park, and then you're just walking down this hill, and there's no petrol station anywhere nearby. So already, it's pretty hard to kind of find where this place is. And I'm going to show you what this place looks like on the map in a second. So you guys can come here for yourself later on if you like. But you arrive at the bottom of the hill and just behind this giant obelisk that doesn't exist anywhere in the game, you see the Sanctuary Bridge, also known as the North Bridge. And at this point guys, I'm just head over heels. I'm like, oh my god, that's the bridge from Sanctuary. That's just the dead giveaway that you're in Sanctuary. Real life Sanctuary confirmed. So let's take a look at the bridge in pre-war Sanctuary in Fallout 4. Here it is looking rather marvellous in all its splendid beauty. And as you guys can see if you look again at the photo I took of the bridge in real life, it's actually very similar. It's got a very similar construction to it. You know, it's the same bridge, you can tell. And you can tell from this viewpoint that I've taken this photo, that everything's so similar, even down to like the stone sort of um, blockade that's on either side of the bridge to stop the ground giving way. And again guys, this photo I took is very similar to how the North Bridge looks after the bombs go off in the game, apart from obviously how the bridge is wrecked in the middle. But you can kind of see like how the land sort of shapes around it and like the stones and how they've like fallen into the river a bit 
the landscape just looks very similar to like what it was like in real life. And that really gets me excited, man. I think it's really cool. But yeah, going back to the footage again, the next thing you'll notice is that the Minuteman statue is actually on the other side of the bridge. Now, this is probably one of the most important things because in Fallout 4, the statue was placed on this side of the bridge that you walk across after leaving Sanctuary. Now, there are a few reasons this might have been, but the most likely reason is that Bethesda couldn't actually legally copy an area completely. Like, they couldn't just copy and paste this area. And that's because this is actually an area of historical significance, which I'll get to in a second. But you'll also notice that the Minuteman statue in real life is different to the one you see in the game. The statue you can see in the game with like the guy holding the rifle seems to be modelled after another Minuteman statue which is just somewhere else in the National Park. I didn't actually look up where it was. So obviously these slight differences mean that Bethesda went out of their way to try not to copy this area. But guys, what I found interesting was that in real life, the Minuteman statue is kind of like a focal point to the whole landscaping of this area, which is entirely appropriate if you think about it historically. And do bear in mind, guys, I'm British. And even though this was a war between the Brits and the Americans, you guys only have like 300 years of history, so you know this stuff a lot better than I do. So I'm very sorry if I get this wrong. But this, where we are now, where Fallout 4 Sanctuary is based, is where the battle for Concord actually took place in real life. Chiseled into the base of the Minuteman statue that stands in this park, just on the bottom line here, is the quote, fired the shot, heard around the world. And the meaning behind that is that the battle for Concord started the American Revolutionary War. So it may have been one shot, but the consequences of that were incredible. Which is why I think, you know, this area is so important to American history, from what I understand anyway. You know, I wasn't taught this in school personally, coming from England. But yet, in-game, the statue is not as significant as it is here in real life. In Fallout 4 though, you do meet Preston Gravy, who himself is a Minuteman. And the very concept of Preston and his Minutemen, and like the Minuteman faction, is based on the real-life Freedom Fighters, which I think is really cool. Though it doesn't make up for how bloody annoying Preston actually is. In fact, I've actually made a t-shirt that you guys can wear to show off to your friends how annoying Preston really is. I actually worked with an artist to get like this sort of artist impression of Preston and it says the quote at the bottom, I want you to do everything while I chill at Sanctuary Hills. And you can grab that t-shirt from the shop in the description below if you are interested. It ships internationally so you can get one wherever you are, but the shop is based in the USA. Anyway, the other thing that you've probably noticed, and to be honest, it was probably the first thing you noticed, because it was definitely the first thing I personally noticed, was the fact that it looks like there are literally no houses here. I mean, I was kind of, like, I'm not gonna lie, when I first sort of came up here, I was expecting to find, like, a small sort of um, hamlet of houses, kind of like a suburb area, and I thought it would literally be like, you know, like Sanctuary in Fallout 4. But uh, maybe it was just me being naive, but this isn't the case, right? And now let's take a look at the map, because it becomes a bit clearer when you look at an overhead view. This is where it starts to get exciting. So if we take a look at the large map first, you can see that we're just north from Concord. If you follow Monument Street from Concord until you get to the car park, Directly left, you can see the Minuteman statue, literally in the centre of the map. It's reasonably similar to Fallout 4's map, as Sanctuary is still on a meandering river, but the lake you see to the right is actually a lot further away in reality. So now if we take a look on this satellite map, and I'm really sorry I do not own a drone, because that would have been so much more useful. But you can see the Minuteman statue again, right in the middle, just across from the bridge there. Now, aside from the fact you cannot see any houses, what you can see is this swooping path which loops around in the same way you see in the game. The only difference being, it's a lot flatter in the game and there are no houses here. 
Another similarity is that the visitor center you can see to the north on this map and then if we just take a look at the footage again there is actually indeed a turning circle that does exist in real life and it's got a giant tree in the middle that all of you guys have probably at one point built like a tree house around that giant tree and that giant tree actually exists but obviously like Bethesda have condensed this down to fit and work in the game but the nice thing is, is that you can see where the influencers have come from. And then again, looking at the map, another similarity is the road to the west. And you can see it on the map highlighted very clearly. And then back into the video, you can actually see the cars just over that hedge driving past. It's actually a bit higher up. But in the game, however, this road has clearly been replaced for the river that surrounds Sanctuary and makes it more of like, you know, an American dream sort of tranquil area. But obviously in real life, it's actually just a road. And then guys, if we go back again and look at the bridge, which obviously exists in the game and in real life, if you look to the south of that bridge, it's actually a very boggy area. And in the game, they've done a great job of like, you know, making the trees look like they do in real life. And like everything's a bit muddy and murky and the rivers sort of overflowing in areas. And it, it does, it looks like it does in real life. Like, I don't know if you can get the impression I've, I've given with, you know, the video and the pictures here, but um, they've nailed that. They really have. So the main difference for me was where the actual vault was. One of the most pinnacle moments in any Fallout game is that moment you exit the vault in Fallout 3 and in Fallout New Vegas and in Fallout 4, which is no different. You exit the vault and you come to an overlook. And this is where Bethesda shines. This is like where I think my favorite part about Bethesda is, like where their design comes into play. Because from that overlook, you can always see the most important landmarks. So let's take a look. From when you exit the vault in Fallout 4, the first thing you see is Sanctuary laid out before you. And obviously, that's going to be the first place you visit. And you also get that stark contrast because you know what it looked like in pre-war sanctuary as well and if you're observant you can also see the top of the uss satellite station olivia over the crest on that hill just to the left there you just see the top of the satellite and then straight on obviously the red rocket station and then the white concord water tower both of those things don't actually exist anywhere in concord in real life or anything there's not even a petrol station but yet, in the game, they had to be there because it was a reference point for the player that can be used to navigate around their surroundings. It's a landmark. In fact, it actually draws the player's attention in that direction. And of course, you're going to go that way because that's where the bridge across the river is. Even the pylons that don't, don't actually exist in real life have been used to channel your vision over to the high-rise buildings of Boston all the way in the distance there. And it just makes you want to go in that direction. You can pick out some of the famous ones from all the way over here even. I mean, it's telling you where to go. And most people will actually subconsciously follow that path that's been laid out intentionally by Bethesda. We can even see the Concord Church Spire, which actually does kind of exist in real life, by the way. And I've got a picture of it here. Concord is a real place, but it's a lot bigger than it is in Fallout 4. Fallout 4's version of Concord is quite tiny, but the architecture is very similar, as I saw when I was driving through it. But this is really something Bethesda does very, very well. They guide you from one point of interest, and then from there, you see another one, and you go to that one, and then from there, you see another one, and you, you keep on going. But they are not holding your hand and it is not linear but they are guiding you but still you're making the choice of where you want to go and what you want to explore next it might be that tower you can see or that cabin on the crest of that hill or like what what's over that next interesting looking mountain it's the same thing in the elder scrolls game as well it's something bethesda is very good at and it's really why exploration in bethesda games is second to none and I'm not saying that as a fanboy, I'm telling you this because I think other developers can learn from it. And I want you guys to understand and appreciate this. It's good video game design. Okay, I kind of went off on one there, but take a look back at this satellite map. And as I said before, 
There is no rocky cliff overlook in real life. It's exaggerated in the game, obviously to give you that, you know, dramatic, it's dramatised. And it gives the dramatic effect of exiting the vault, right? But in real life, there is a steep hill to the north, which you can actually stand on. And you can overlook the north bridge and where Sanctuary would be if the house has existed. So I think this was probably the inspiration for that overlook view when you leave the vault. Now I've actually just invested quite a bit of money, more than my computer's actually worth, on a new camera and some like recording equipment, just so I can start doing more location walkthroughs and real life comparison videos like this. If that's something you're interested in, please make sure you go ahead and smash the subscribe button and also press that little bell icon next to it. This basically ensures that you always get notified as soon as I release a new video on YouTube. And if you want a sneak peek of what I'm working on, I also suggest following me on Instagram and Twitter and they're linked below in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I know it's been a long video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Have a fantastic day guys.